So you have been diagnosed with diabetes for a little while, and you've been taking some medications that seem for the most part that they have not been working as expected. Maybe it's the medication, maybe it's your diet, or maybe you are not exercising, but what if maybe you are doing all of that? Taking your medications, eating a healthy diet, and exercising quite frequently. So when you visit your doctor, you show them your blood glucose log with mostly elevated numbers, and they do lab work, or more specifically your A1C, and it's elevated, maybe even increased. So your doctor tells you, I think I'm gonna add another medication. I'm gonna add either glipizide, glimepiride, or glabiride. So you ask, what are those? And your doctor replies to you, they are in a class of medication called sulfonylureas. And you ask, sulfonyl what? Hi there, I'm Nurse Master Charlie. I am a registered nurse and a certified diabetes educator, or now known as a certified diabetes care and education specialist. Have you ever heard of the medication class called sulfonylureas? If you have diabetes, there is a strong possibility that you take this type of medication or know someone who does. And like the story in the intro, maybe it's the medication that your doctor is considering prescribing for you. And if you are a nurse, you have probably seen this type of medication on a patient's medication list. That is what this video is about today, sulfonylureas. To all my family, friends, colleagues, supporters, and subscribers, welcome back, and a big thank you for your support. To all of you who do not know me, welcome to my YouTube channel, welcome to my nursing channel. I'm glad you found my channel where I talk about and share about nursing, nursing school related topics and tips, as well as health related topics, tips, and information. Today is what I like to call Medication Monday, and usually my Medication Monday videos are done as shorts, which are usually 30 to 60 seconds long. But in observations of Diabetes Education Month, and as a nurse and diabetes educator, for the month of November, I'm making my videos a little bit longer so I can share a little bit more information about the medications used in the treatment of diabetes. So today's medication topic is on that of sulfonylureas, what they are, what they're used for, what the benefits are, how they work, and what the side effects are. And sulfonylureas, what kind of name is that? What kind of word is that? Due to this long name and difficult long name, you may see them abbreviated as SU for short, sulfonylureas. Sulfonylureas by definition refers to hypoglycemic compounds related to sulfonamides that are used to treat diabetes. So sulfonylureas, what kind of medication is that? It's a type of medication that is used to treat high blood glucose in diabetes type two. And one also has been known to be used to treat high blood glucose levels in gestational diabetes. The most commonly prescribed sulfonylureas are glimepiride, also known as Amaral, glipizide, also known as glucotrol, which sounds like some type of transformer, you know, more than meets the eye, and glabiride, also known as diabeta, glinase, and micronase. Now these are all considered second generation sulfonylureas, but you may see others prescribed as glibenoclamide, tolazamide, and tolbutamide, which are considered first generation. Now as an FYI, glimepiride is sometimes considered a third generation type. Now I just mentioned the generation types just in case you hear of them being described as first, second, or third generations. Think of that as medications that have evolved or were made better. Let me know in the comments below if you or a family member or a friend take any of these medications and stick around to the end of this video because I'm gonna share about where these medications are ranked in the comparison to other diabetes medications and why. And for you nursing students or nurses watching this, this is some of the information that you should know for your overall medication knowledge. That way, when you see these medications on your patient's list of medications, you will know a little bit more about them. So before we get too deep into this video, this video is for educational purposes only. This is not an all-inclusive informative video about sulfonylureas, just some basic information. If you have specific questions or concern about this medication or any of your medications, please talk to your healthcare provider and or your pharmacist. So how are sulfonylureas developed? They were kind of discovered like many great inventions accidentally. Okay, so let's picture it's 1942 and you're a chemist making or creating antibiotics and vaccines to help rid the world of infections related to germs like bacteria and viruses. So speaking of bacteria and viruses, see my other videos about influenza, diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis to learn about how vaccines were created for those bacteria and viruses. I'll leave links at the end of this video. So as a chemist, you learn that these sulfonylureas are not only effective in killing certain bacteria, but also in causing hypoglycemia or low blood sugar. And you say to yourself, what, what? And that's how sulfonylureas were discovered and developed to help in controlling blood glucose in people with type two diabetes. So now that we know what they are and how they came to be, how do they work? Let's briefly review which organ in the body makes insulin. Is it the lungs, the gallbladder, 
Is it the liver or is it the pancreas? If you said or guessed the pancreas, you are absolutely correct. Sulfonylureas cause the pancreas, or more specifically the beta cells within the pancreas, to produce or secrete insulin. Sulfonylureas are also called insulin secretagogues, which literally means to promote secretion. And in this case, it would mean to promote the secretion of insulin. So if you are asking yourself how, let me explain. I'm going to get real technical and scientific for a moment as I describe how this occurs. First, sugar is used by our cells to create energy. A beta cell has many doors, and one door specifically is to let glucose enter the cell. This is similar in many cells. This insulin cell specific door is called a GLUT2 or glucose transporter 2. Sugar or glucose enters the cell through this door. After entering, glucose is then converted into ADP or adenosine diphosphate and ATP or adenosine triphosphate. These are basically energy. As ATP levels rise within the beta cells from conversion of the sugar to energy, this causes closure of another type of door. This door also called a channel not like a YouTube channel or TV channel, but a channel as in a pathway between two pieces of land, or in this case, a pathway between inside the insulin cell and outside of the insulin cell. This channel is called the ATP sensitive potassium channel. This channel or door allows potassium to enter and exit cells freely most of the time. There is potassium inside the insulin cells, which can usually leave the cell when it needs to, or bring more in when needed also. When ATP is created from the sugar, this causes this door or ATP sensitive channel to close. When potassium levels decrease, it then causes something called depolarization within the cell to occur, which in turn opens another door or channel. This is the calcium channel or calcium door. Still following me? It is this calcium influx that then causes the stimulation and release of insulin from what are known as insulin vesicles. They're also known as secretory granules or granules that secrete or produce insulin, which is then released into the circulation or the bloodstream. Now real quick, think of insulin as a key and an insulin receptor on a muscle as a door. The insulin then finds the insulin receptor on the muscle cells or body cells, resulting in the cell doors being open. That allows blood glucose to leave the circulation and enter the muscle cells where it is converted into energy. This at the same time removes sugar from the bloodstream, thus lowering blood glucose levels. All that to tell you this, sulfonylureas work by mimicking or copying this process. They force the closure of the ATP sensitive potassium channels. As potassium levels decrease, it then causes the calcium doors to open, letting calcium in, which then causes the insulin vesicles to produce insulin, which is then released into the circulation, allowing for blood glucose to enter the cells, again, lowering circulating blood glucose levels. In addition to all that, one benefit of sulfonylureas for those who have type 2 diabetes is that it can lower a person's hemoglobin A1C, also known as an A1C, by approximately 2%. The overall goal of anti-diabetic medications is to help control blood glucose levels and lower the A1C. Now, 2% may not seem like a lot, but do you know that by lowering an A1C by only 1%, it can decrease a risk of having a heart attack by 14%? and decrease the risk of having an amputation by 43%. So heart attack prevention and amputation prevention, those are two good reasons to use these medications. If you are unfamiliar with what an A1C is or how it works, after you're done watching this video, please watch my video titled, What is a Hemoglobin A1C? I'll put a link in the card here. Sulfonylureas can also increase the sensitivity of beta cells to glucose, which makes them work better by allowing more glucose to enter the beta cells, which in turn makes more insulin production. They can also reduce hepatic glucose production or sugar release from the liver, which is a contributing factor to elevated blood glucose levels. Another good thing is that these medications are relatively cheap and inexpensive. Okay, so if these medications are so great, and I just described all the pros, why isn't everybody taking them? And what are the side effects and what are the cons of these medications? These medications have quite a bit of side effects. One of the most common and most serious side effects is hypoglycemia or low blood sugar. The signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia include headache, sweating, shaking, dizziness, blurry vision, fatigue, and also heart palpitations and some irritability. Because if you think about it, if sulfonylureas make the pancreas make more insulin, low blood sugar could result, especially if used in combination with other diabetes medications. Another unwanted side effect is weight gain, which is contradictory to the goal of diabetes in general, which is to help decrease weight, which helps lower insulin resistance, which is another component of diabetes. Sulfonylureas can also react with many other medications. Other side effects include hypersensitivity reactions such as urticaria, hives, itching, and upset stomach. Caution should be taken if given to those with sulfa or sulfonamide allergies. 
Sulfonylureas have been and continue to be used in gestational diabetes. Although considered safe, they are known to cause neonatal hypoglycemia as they can cross the placental barrier, leading to low blood sugar. As these babies utilize more sugar, it can lead to LGA or large gestational age babies, which can lead to birth trauma, injury, or C-sections for the mama. Normally, the pancreas produces insulin when we need it, generally when we eat or when blood glucose levels are elevated. But these medications force the pancreas to make insulin continually, which is one of the reasons for the high risk of hypoglycemia. These medications stimulate beta cells within the pancreas to make and secrete more insulin. But one issue is that it also makes the pancreas work harder over time. And over time, the pancreas can kind of like wear out. This in turn can make sulfonylureas to lose their effectiveness in making the pancreas produce insulin. Ideally, after lifestyle changes, then medication therapy would begin. As for the ranking of these sulfonylureas, in diabetes treatment, it begins with lifestyle changes as in diet and exercise. The first line of defense medication-wise is metformin. And if you haven't watched my video on metformin, I'll leave a link in the card here. There are reasons that glipizide, glimepiride, and gliburide are used, but according to the American Diabetes Association algorithm, which is a list or pathway of which medications should be used first, it kind of looks like this. And due to the risk of hypoglycemia and weight gain and all the other reasons I listed in the cons, sulfonylureas are listed as last in the treatment of diabetes type 2. Now these medications have been around for a very long time and they are used every day by many people with diabetes. They are very effective. They are also very inexpensive. It's just that they are not listed at the top for diabetes treatment. Here you see them on the algorithm listed last or rank last primarily due to the hypoglycemia or the risk of low blood sugar. One more reminder, remember if you have specific questions or concerns about this medication or any of your medications, talk with your healthcare provider or your pharmacist. Okay, so if you found value in this video and learned a little something, please be sure to give this video a like as it helps out my channel. Also, now that you know about these medications, what they are, what they do, don't forget to share this video with anybody who may benefit from this information about sulfonylureas those you know who are taking it or maybe considering taking it, those wanting to learn about it, those of you who are in nursing school or are pre-nursing school. Remember, this series of Medication Monday videos are going to be about specific medications used to treat diabetes. And if you're interested in health information and nursing-related content like this, I'd like to invite you to subscribe and be part of my nursing channel and also hit the notification bell so you can be made aware of when I release new videos. Please be sure to check out my many other nursing topic related videos, my nursing related music lyric videos here on YouTube, and my YouTube shorts in which I created Germs Day Thursday and release new videos on most Thursdays about different types of germs, and Medication Mondays in which I highlight and share general information about certain medications and release new videos on most Mondays, and Sweet Saturdays in which I share and compare the amount of sugars in certain food products and release new videos on most Saturdays. Be sure to check those out to learn some quick tidbits of bonus information. I also write and create original nursing and health related educational music. Be sure to listen to my music on all music streaming platforms, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, Pandora, etc. And watch my lyric videos here on YouTube of my diabetes related songs, What is Diabetes, Check Your Feet, the A1C song, which are songs pertaining to diabetes. Also, be sure to check out my nursing blog on my website, www.nursemastercharlie.com. I post new nursing and health blog articles weekly related to what I share here on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. I'll also leave a link in the description. So thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And be sure to find me here every Monday to every other Monday for a Medication Monday video. So until the next video, God bless and goodbye.